So today we are going to be drawing clouds epically. The thing with clouds is that people always think that clouds are actually a lot more difficult to draw than you'd think. Like people are like, oh, I can't draw clouds. I'm like, I don't have a cloud brush. I don't know how to do that. I promise you it's actually not that bad. To understand how to draw clouds, let's look at actual clouds. When we look at clouds themselves, clouds, if you don't really analyze them, kind of just look like big blobs. But let's take a closer look at what these things are, right? Notice that the shape of clouds, we got this fluffy bit on top and it actually kind of straightens out at the bottom of the shape, right? Not perfectly, but it straightens out a little bit. So if you've ever seen like stylistic clouds, they tend to just be drawn with that straight line at the bottom puffy on top. This one's a really good example. You notice that the bottoms of the clouds are all nice and very leveled out while the tops are very fluffy. Another thing you might want to notice is look at the shadows that hit clouds, right? Look at these shadows. They're actually not that blended in. They're a lot harsher than you might think, right? Depending on the cloud, of course. But notice how like harsh these shadows actually are on the clouds, right? They're not that smooth. It's not, they're not super, super soft, right? You can make out almost outlines within the shapes of these clouds, right? Following that same fluffy texture, but it's not like it's like super, super blended, right? So if I was to render something like this out, what I would actually recommend is starting with the whites. Cause like I've talked about like rendering stuff out before, but if we were to render out something like clouds, I would actually recommend with starting with the lighter color. So again, I see they're mostly, what I'm doing, if you notice with my brush, you can see the outline of my brush. I'm working in circular motions. I'm not gonna do something super realistic, but I'm working in more circular motions to get this wispier look. I also don't want it to be a perfect up and down. So I think I actually over rendered this. Let's try that again. I don't want a perfect up and down, right? I kind of want to add some variation to the shape. Not a perfectly straight bottom, but certainly more flat than the upper, right? So once I kind of have a shape that I want, then I'm like, okay, then I'll start adding my shadows back in, right? Depending on the time of day, depending on where the light is coming from, all that kind of stuff, you can change the color of your shadows. I'm going with a more like daytime sort of cloud shadow. But again, it's not super blended in. What I'm using is a brush that is opacity by pressure. So an opacity by pressure brush is just how hard you press will change how opaque the brush is, All right? I'll just kind of start to, so because it's sort of the daytime, my shadows, because the light is more of like a yellow tint, my shadows will lean more to blue. So I'll just slowly get darker and darker. And clouds are actually as easy as that. <laughs> Clouds are not that tough. They're actually quite easy. I don't find clouds tough at all. I have a cloud brush. Like I have a proper brush that's supposed to like draw in clouds for you. But I actually find I like this more stylistic thing because you're working digitally. There are brushes for everything, right? So you can find a cloud brush really easily. Like cloud brushes are one of the main FX brushes that you'll probably find anywhere. And like, I think this looks all right, but I think that manually doing it gives it a different kind of life. So I'm like, there's a lot of different textures you can play around with with this. But let's say I went even more cartoony than this, right? Let's say that I really wanted to like make this more minimal. So let's break this down into two different values instead. The white of the cloud and one shadow. So once again, I'm gonna kind of plan out my shape a little bit working in this. Notice that I'm still working in more circular motions. Then I'm gonna lock this, find what shadow color I want. I'm gonna draw in this shadow. What I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna go back in and kind of erase a bit of the shadow too, like this. Yeah, I'm just gonna kind of cut into the shadow to give it more visual variation. But yeah, nice and cartoony, two values, easy like that. And I guess if you wanted to do line art, all you'd have to do is just add the line art first, but I wouldn't. Regardless of like, if you're cartoony or not, I wouldn't add line art to clouds ever just because like clouds are very rarely your focal point. A big question we get a lot during streams and on the channel is advice on how to start as a content creator. And we always tend to recommend starting with budget-friendly assets before moving on to something new. But today's sponsor, Wondershare Demo Creator, can be used by pros and beginners alike. Wondershare Demo Creator is a simple to use video recorder and editor rolled into one software for learners, educators, freelancers, and gamers alike. The video editor uses many easy to use features to make editing quick while still looking professionally made, such as filters, auto-generated captions, and overlays. Not only this, but the video recorder has live 
live editing capabilities such as adding arrows, magnifying specific spots on your screen, and adding spotlights onto specific areas of your work. This makes the video editing pipeline much quicker and easier, especially if you're an aspiring art tutorial channel, an artist in general, or are a teacher or student who needs to make a video presentation for your class. Speaking of the video recorder, not only does it have a webcam capturing software and overlays built into it, but it also has VTubing capabilities with a hand motion tracker, which is far more advanced than any free to try software has any right being. As someone who knows how much work and effort goes into making a VTuber, having an easily accessible one right at your fingertips is huge. Be sure to try out Wondershare Demo Creator for yourself with the link in the description, and thank you once again for sponsoring this video. Thinner clouds are a little bit more like, if you want something a little bit more thinner, you still want to keep that cartoony style. Again, I would turn on the opa layer by opacity, especially if you want those sort of wispy looking clouds. Less is more. So like if you want that kind of like wispy across the air sort of look, couple strokes, you're good enough. But yeah, look at how much contrast that has. Like I don't think people notice how much contrast clouds actually have. Very, very important. Nighttime clouds, the thing with clouds at night is that there will be no light bouncing on them. So if you have like a dark night sky, all you gotta do is just like slight lightness and just add those clouds back in, especially if it's at night. If you have the moon somewhere, like say if you got like a moon somewhere, what you could do, it's an epic looking moon. What you could do, <laughs> So you can do a really dark kind of cloud because clouds at night really don't have a lot of light hitting them, right? Because there isn't a lot of light to begin with. But if there's the moon there, then they will have a little bit of like edge lighting because the moon is now their light source, right? That sort of thing. Nice and dark. What I tend to do when I do some kind of cloudy sky is just to add some color variation. First of all, never use pure gray. Use something more kind of like a blue or an orange. You're more, you're better off using a colder blue. And then just add color variation in there. Tune into our weekly live streams for art tips and demos in real time. Subscribe and hit that little bell to get notifications for when we're live. Let's look at a cloudy day. Look at these gray skies, these cloudy, dreary days, right? Notice that even though it's like gray, it's all gray, there's still a little bit of color variation in there. Some areas where the clouds are thinner, some areas where the clouds are thicker, right? So all you gotta do is just add that variation back in. So maybe there's some areas in here that are a little bit lighter. And make sure you stick with your perspective as well. Clouds are easy because you can make them follow perspective without being too precious about it. Like just as long as it generally follows the general direction of your perspective, you're all good. Yeah, some cloudy days are darker than others. Some are lighter. Gray skies are one of those things where you actually don't want the contrast to be too high, but there should be just enough contrast to the point where you can tell like there's no sun out. And here's the thing, some people will ask me like, how do I do like sunset clouds? All right, it's zero difference from this one or this one or this one. You just gotta change the colors. Change the colors, add some rim light, you're all good. Right. Let's actually, let's actually just change this one. All right. Let's say that this one was like at golden hour, right? Yellow, deep purple, and then like, like a rim light almost. And then like a yellow, which obviously would look better if there was actual sunsets <laughs> to help you out there. But it's just changing the colors. And of course your references are there as well. Join a virtual class to learn live from our professional artists. Get creative assignments, individual guidance, and real-time feedback on your artwork. Start today and level up your practice. If you learn something new, like and share this with a fellow art nerd. If you love receiving quality and free arts education, subscribe. Here's a couple other videos you can check out next.